Hello there, Hawks! And apparently Robin who just got scared. Um, this is chapter two, section one. We move, we move on to a new chapter. And it is relations and functions. And so we have up here three different examples of functions. And this is not the first time you have been exposed to functions. We did this in algebra one. So I just want to remind you that a one-to-one -one function um, is a function where every element of the domain gets mapped or paired to exactly one element in the range. So I want to show you an example here of a one-to-one -one function. So here are my x values, the domain, and my y's are the, are the y values, so here's my range. So you can see that every x value is going to one y value. And one thing that doesn't really matter is you'll notice that nothing is going to the c. That's just kind of there. Um, but nothing is being mapped to it, that's okay. This would be an example of a one-to-one -one function. And then we have what we call an onto function. And an onto function differs from a one-to-one -one function in that the elements in the range all have to be used, so to speak. Okay, so for example, see, this would not work because there's nothing mapped to C. So for an onto function, each element of the range, which is each element here of the range, corresponds to an element in the domain. So this would be an element in the range that is not corresponding to an element in the domain. So this is not an onto function. Over here we have an example of an onto function where um, everything in the range is coming, um, is mapped to something from the, from the x from the, from the domain. So that works for onto. Um, and here I wanted to point out that it's okay that both the three and the four are being paired with the C. That's okay, that's not a problem. It doesn't, as long as there's no other three value that's paired with, the, with a different letter, um, it's okay. This is an onto function. Everything in the range has to have an X value paired with it. And then we have this guy, and he would be kind of like the combination of both. If you're one to one and onto, then that means that every X value goes to one Y value, and on top of that, all of the y values are paired to something in the x. So it's not like the first one where the c is by itself and doesn't have anything. Um, and also, it's not where you have two different x values going to the same y value. So this would be a one to one and on to combined. So now we're going to go to um, our first example. And in our first example, it says that we must state the domain range of each relation. That's going to be the easiest part. Um, so what we do there is we say, we put a D for domain, and you have to use the, with these uh, little funky brackets. And basically what it wants is all of the X values. Now when you do this, it is important for you to note that when you list the domain elements, that you always list them in chronological order, even though they might be out of order in the original set. So for example, I have negative 6, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, and positive 6. So lucky for me, all of those x values are actually in the right order already. So I'm just going to list them all. There's a negative 6, a negative 5, a negative 3, a negative 1, and a positive 6. And then close that off. That's my domain. And then I'm going to get my range the same way, only this time I want to um, get all the y values. And again, same is true for domain and range. If, in this case it didn't happen, but if, you have a repeated x value, you do not list it twice in the domain. You only list it once, and you always list them in chronological order. So, for the range, we have negative 1 for the y, negative 9 for the y, negative 7 for the y, positive 7 for the y, and another negative 9. So you can see that with the y values, we do have a repeated value of negative 9, and negative 9 is the smallest number, but we're only going to write it once, not twice. The next smallest number is negative 7. And then the next smallest number would be negative 1. And then the next one was going to be, so we did the negative 9 already, have our negative 1 already, negative 7 is there already, we need our positive 7. I think that's it. So you'll notice that for the domain you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values, but for the range you only have 4 because one of them was repeated but you don't write it twice in the, in the range, so you just leave it like that. So then it says, determine whether each relation is a function, if it is a function. So first of all, let's find out if it's a function or not. If it's a function, it means that 
all of the x values are going to go to one and only one y value. So um, I believe that none of these x values were repeated. So yes, this is a function. So we're going to say yes, it's a function. And then it says furthermore that if it is a function, then it wants to determine whether or not it's one to one, onto, or both. Okay? So um, in this case, we are going to have it to be both. Or sorry, not both. It's going to be onto. Um, why is it not one to one? It's not one to one because we saw that um, each element of the domain is not paired with the unique element of the range. One to one would mean that, um, so let me give you the example here. So here we go. This problem, this is the problem right here. We have two different x values going to the same y value. Um, that's not one to one. If you go back over here, we talked about one to one. Each x has to go to one y. This is not one to one. This is where you have two different x values to the same y value. That's called onto but it's not one-to-one. -one. So um, in this case, we'll say, so it says determine whether it is one-to-one, onto, so it is onto, but it's not one-to-one. -one. And because it's not one-to-one, -one, then it can't be both. All righty? So that is how we do that. And we're gonna do one more example over here with part B. Do the same exact thing. We're going to go for our domain first. So let me uh, come over here. Domain. Remember again that we don't repeat any values, so you'll notice that we have negative one twice, and we have positive two twice, but we don't write it down twice. But we do put them in chronological order, so negative two is the smallest, and then we have negative one, and then we have positive two. So we will do that, and uh, the range are the y values, and in the case of the y values, we don't have um, anything repeated, nothing's repeated. So we're just going to put them in order negative 2, negative 1, and then 0, and then 1, and then 2. So in this case, you can see that we only have three domain values, and we have five range values because um, two of our values in the domain were repeated. So we never, ever repeat the values in the domain and range lists, and we always put them in chronological order. Um, the next step would be to ask if this is a function or not. And this would um, not be a function because um, we have negative 1 is one x value that is being paired to two different y values. So this is not a function. And since it's not a function, then there's no point for us to even discuss whether or not it's one to one or onto. Um, so for part B, we get that it is um, not a function. And then that's that. So now you are going to try. This example, um, just remember that with these ordered pairs, before you want to get started, you want to make sure that you um, list your ordered pairs there. But you'll have fun with that. And then we're going to talk about discrete relations versus continuous relations. And so we have some examples for you up here, not very complicated. Um, a discrete relation is when um, you have a graph that the domain is a set of individual points. See how we have here? They're not actually connected. Um, they're just kind of all, they don't have to be in a line, they could be all scattered, but they're just individual points with no connection between the points. Um, that's called a discrete relation. A continuous relation is where you have an infinite number of elements in the domain, and when you graph it, it's going to be like a, a full line um, where everything's connected, um, or it could be a smooth curve, it doesn't have to be a line, um, but everything is connected. So that's continuous relation versus discrete relation. And then we have the vertical line test. And again, we've done this in the past, but I want to make sure that you remember how this works. So I kind of want to show you why the vertical line test works for a function. We know that the basic definition for a function is that each x value is paired with exactly one y value. So I wanted to show you what that would look like. So I have an example here with blue. And these blue dots, I'm going to graph them. These blue dots represent, or these blue ordered pairs represent um, something that works versus something that doesn't work. And I'm going to show you right now why it doesn't work. So if I plot the point 1, 2, that would be 1, 2, there would be my point. Then I would have negative 1, 3. So here would be negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3. So there would be my point. And then 5, 2 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over here, so we're 2. 
Okay, that's what that would look like. Um, this will be a function because all of these x values only have one y value. Um, it's not one to one, but it is on two because the same x value, um, or sorry, two different x values have the same y value, so this would be on two. Oops, not the right color there. This would be on two, um, and it would be a function. So these points represent something that doesn't work. And I kind of want to show you, so I made these in the wrong color. These are the ones that do work. Uh -huh. I wanted to show you what would happen um, in the case where it doesn't work, okay? So if it doesn't work, I would have a point like 1, 2. So we already uh, graphed the point 1, 2. It's right here. We would be graphing the point 1, 3, and that would be 1, 3. And we would graph the point 5, 2, and 1, 2, 3, 5. So 5, 2 is right here. Okay, and if I want for right now, I'm just going to kind of get rid of this blue one. Now, looking at these points, we know that this is not a function because we have the same x value with two different y values. This is not a function. But what it means, I want, I want to relate that to not being a function, not a function, and how that relates to the vertical line test. Because if I take my ruler and draw a vertical line right here, you will see what I'm talking about. What you will notice is that when I draw this vertical line, the vertical line crosses the two points at the same time. So that's basically how the vertical line test works. If you can draw a vertical line through any two points or places on the graph, then this function would fail the vertical line test and it would not be a function. So I want to show you how that works over here with this guy. I have two examples of some functions. And if I were to draw a vertical line with this function, there would not be a problem. It would cross one time, right here. Not a problem. But if I were to draw a vertical line through this graph, this would represent, this would represent a point on the, on the graph where this x value, right there, would have two y values. That's one y value, two y values. We already said that if you have the same x value with two different y values, it's not a function. So that's how the vertical line test works. You want to draw a vertical line through the graph, and if it crosses two times or more, then it fails the vertical line test. So now we're going to um, go to our next example. And this is example two, and I didn't want to draw the graph, so I kind of got all cool-like and put it up here. So um, this is example two in your textbook, and I'm just going to read what it says here. The graph shows the length of the Tour de France in kilometers each year, from the year 2000 right here, all the way to 2009, which is right at the very end of the graph here. And what it's asking us, and I did write that part over there in the, in the left side, it's asking us, is this relation discrete or continuous? Well, hopefully you will say discrete because those points are not connected. All right, there's no connected uh, smooth graph going through those points. So this would be um, discrete. But then it says, does the graph represent a function? And for us to know if it represents a function, what we can do is we can see if the vertical line test passes. Okay, so I'm going to use a vertical line test wherever there's um, a dot. So like there's one. Let's see here. All right then. I'm gonna have a vertical line there. Anywhere there's a there's a, a, a point, I'm going to use a vertical line. This is gonna be so much fun. La 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 la. This is kind of lame. Okay, there we go. So you can see that every time I drew a vertical line going through these ordered pairs, every single time it only crossed one time. That tells us that this function is in fact a function. Yes, it is a function because it passed the vertical line test every single time. So now we're going to have you do this little example, 
And then once you've done that, we're going to move on. So here's my last um, example, and then you'll have um, actually not my last example, two more examples to go actually. Um, so here's uh, the next one: graph y equals one x minus three. I really hope that you remember how to graph y equals mx plus b. Um, the slope is one half, which is rise over run, and the y-intercept is zero negative three. And um, if you don't remember that, you might want to look back in your Algebra 1 textbooks. Um, but you should remember how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go, here's an x, so I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, put my y-intercept right there. And then my slope is 1, 2, so I'm going to go up 1, and to the right, 2 units, up 1, to the right, 2 units. And I'm going to connect those points. That's how you graph a line. Now, if you don't remember how to do a line, um, another option is for you to just make a t-table. But that just takes longer. So hopefully you remember how to do this. But there's my graph. y equals 1 half x uh, minus 3. So I graph that little guy. And then it says to determine whether the equation is a function. Um, and I believe that, yes, this is a function. All right, that is a function. And um, because every x value only has one y value, then we are going to say that not only is it a function, but it is also a one-to-one um, -one function, or whatever you want to call that. Okay, it's one-to-one, -one, meaning there's one x value for every y value. Um, let's see, what else do they want us to know? Determine whether the equation is a function. Yes, it is. Is it one to one? Yes. We want to prove it here one to one. It passes the vertical line test. So it's a function. It's one to one. La, 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 la. And it's also on to. All right. It's also on to. No problem. Because if it wasn't one-to-one, -one, then you would have values that weren't um, used. But in this case, all the values are being used. So it's both one-to-one -one and on-to. And what else do they want to know? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Yes, state whether it is discrete or continuous. It is definitely continuous because it's a line. It's like everything's connected, continuous. I hope I spell that right. OK, so there you go. That's that little guy. And now you can do one over here. And after that, we have our last example this time for sure, and it's about function notation. Um, when we do um, functions, there's always an independent variable, dependent variable. Um, the independent variable is usually the x value, and the dependent is the y. Um, but of course, um, f of x is just really a fancy way of saying y. It means the value of the function f when x is whatever. Um, so when I look at f of 6, it's asking me to tell um, what is the value of the f function when x is 6. So all we really do is replace the x with the 6 and then evaluate. 2 times 36 minus 8. Um, who wants to tell me what 2 times 36 is? Paul. No, he's too slow. 2 72. times 36 is 72. <laughs> And 72 minus Ocho is 64. So it turns out that the value of the function when x is 6 is 64. And then we have one other one over here. It looks kind of funky, but it's not. This guy is asking me, what is the value of the function when x is 2y? So what I'm going to do is instead of plugging in a 6, I'm going to plug in a 2y. And the only thing I will call you here Doing. The only thing that I will caution you here about is when people plug in the 2y, oftentimes they forget to square both the 2 and the y. You need to go 2 times 2 squared is 4, and then y squared minus 8. And then that's 2 times 4 is 8, y squared minus 8. And in this case, you cannot combine the y squared with the 8. So this is our final answer. The value of the function when f is 2y is 8y squared minus 8. So that is how you deal with function notation. So now you will attempt this little guy. And then um, once you've done that, you will have um, finished your notes for today. And I will see you in class. Gracias for watching.